Here's some octopus. Uh, here's some uh, whelks. Here's a big, large clam, sort of like our surf clam or butter clam here. You'll notice there's a little commensal crab that lives in the, the shell, which is all part of the, uh, the, the gourmet feast. And I mean, it's soft, it's crunchy, and tastes a lot like the soup. Um, but it was, it was very good. Um, the other thing that you don't notice, well, you'll notice some. There's a beer bottle there. Um, alcohol plays a, a major role in most of the meals. Um, partly for social purposes, but also for almost aggressive industrial purposes. They have this liquor called um, Mai Tai, and it's, uh, it's a sorghum-based uh, alcohol, so it's, it's like moonshine, effectively, and it's got the kick of rocket fuel, uh, which, which they like to shoot, which they like to shoot. So it's, it's sort of like a, a gum by, and you tap it on the table, and then down it goes, and the whole point is that you it creates this sort of business uh, relationship. And if you can't hold your alcohol, then, then business may have to tip in favor of them. Because usually there's more of them toasting you than there is you toasting them. Um, but anyway, it was it was quite interesting. We quickly shifted to beer after that because it was just, uh, yeah, it was vile. They um, startled. Yeah, <laughs> that's the good thing. So these are just some random shots. Um, this is one of the old, communes, the agricultural communes that were, that were used for building fields. Those are all being eliminated as far as we can see, at least in this area, and it's all moving to high rises. And there are construction cranes everywhere, everywhere we look, in the country, in the cities, and it seems like the world's largest collection of construction cranes are all sitting there. You can look across the horizon and all you'd see would be cranes and new buildings and stuff like that going up. They're also incredibly efficient. Although there's there's individuals that you know, look after two cows or whatever, you can see these cows on the major highways. They're grazing on the side of the expressways, um, and that's this guy's job: to look after those couple of cows and do whatever they do and bring them back. Um, there's a whole lot of change with regard to transportation. You see everything from walking to old bicycles to new bicycles to scooters to small cars to big cars. Um, and all I can think of is the social unrest that must be causing between different families. You know, I, you know, they have a scooter and we only have a bike. You know, why can't we have a scooter? Um, and so there's a lot of this stuff going on. Most of them, there's not a whole lot of helmets, but there's an awful lot of these uh, little face masks that they wear um, to keep the sun off their face because it's seen as, you know, as you, as you rise in social stature, the less weather your face, the, you know, basically it means you're not working in fields as much. So, so there's a lot of work that goes on to, to, to cover your face on this. So our next trip was back to the second day was from Qingdao, we went to Jianan, which is um, not so much a, uh, a, um, a, an agriculture city, but more of a processing city. It's fairly large. I just took this, uh, this shot out of just outside of Jianan. This is the coastline. And you can see all the ponds. The whole coastline is, is fenestrated with these, uh, with these, these ex shrimp ponds. Now they're sea cucumber ponds. And they're slowly moving to freshwater crab ponds, which I'll tell you a little bit more about later. This is, we went to this place called the Bright Moon Science Park. Um, they're basically a processor. They take seaweeds and they make various products out of it. Um, they, so they take a series. Some of them come from, about a third of them come from Chile and South America. Two thirds come from China. They take the alginate, so they take the, the kelps, basically, and they, they, they reduce those down to get alginates, which is a thicker. They use it in gels and whatnot. But they're also looking at things like pharmaceuticals from algae. I mean, we're doing the same thing here, and there's stuff you can find in kelp that are good for uh, lowering blood pressure, for example. And there's, there's lots of things I mean, that, that are good for cosmetics and good for your skin, the alginic acid, in, for example. Um, Anyway, so they're, they're quite busy. Anything that's left over basically goes to uh, shrimp. So here's a shot just of some of the product. This is the CEO of the company that met us. And, and so these are just some of the products that he did. And of course, the Bright Moon also owns a hotel. So it's, it's interesting how a lot of these industries branch out and diversify. Marvel's big in most of their hotels, at least the big ones. And of course, you get into more meals with more elaborate dishes, more elaborate centerpieces, and there's a real ritual that goes into all of this. And we, you know, 
we started to get into you know, or understanding some of the, uh, the pros and cons and where you're supposed to sit and where you're not supposed to sit and what you're supposed to do and you know, some strategies for trying not to drink too much of my time. Um, on our way back, we saw some of the old fashioned, so this is several hundred years old, but these are abalone ponds um, where they would put in, so they, they would put these rock walls in and they would uh, farm an abalone and, uh, and take those out. But those are so going away. Although, if you're looking back, there's a lot of fishing shacks, there's a lot of fishing families that still live there. And if you see some of them, so this we took the ferry back, and just before we got on the ferry, you know, they, they basically sell their wares. You know, to to various travelers, not so much tourists, but you know, more of the, the Chinese that are they're moving through and they're looking for fish, and uh, so you can buy everything. I mean, from fish that are as you know, perhaps just uh, a couple centimeters long, up to the the big long blade fish that you see the sort of thing. Or, sort of. Anyway, so our next big trip then was from Qingdao, and we went up to Yantai. So that was a that was a fairly long longish trip. Um, Yantai is again, it's a coastal city, um, you know, fairly large. This is a, a seaweed plant that they have. So seaweed is the, basically the laminary kelp, that's the big blade of kelp. Um, it's, it's produced in these hatcheries and these buildings. Now the buildings look fairly fancy and they're built that way intentionally because this is a tourist area and they want all of their aquaculture facilities to look good from the road. And so as people are driving by, they can kind of see them. Um, here's here's the shot of them. They're absolutely huge, and you can get an idea. So there's a, each of these buildings. This is what it looks like inside. They're just basically large greenhouses, and the water gets poured into you know comes in, is pumped into the top. It trickles down through all of these. They inoculate each of these little pools with, uh, with spores from the seaweeds, and those settle on these uh, coconut fiber ropes. And then those ropes are then taken and stretched out in the ocean to grow once they once they get a little bit longer. And so there, it's just an absolutely huge operation. The greenhouses are covered with these mats. So these are coconut fiber mats that roll up. And so when they want more light, they roll them up. And when they don't want so much light, they, they just roll them back down. So there's little steps and guys go up and down here to roll them. They, they have huge heating facilities so they can heat the water up. And then they also have some, uh, some large ponds that they're growing. Not surprisingly, sea cucumbers. Um, also, they own a hotel. It seems like anybody who's anybody has their own hotel there. And this was uh, called the Oriental Ocean Hotel. Um, in a lot of cases, when you go into restaurants, you can pick your food. So they have aquaria that sit just on the entrance to the restaurant, mm -hmm. and you can pick what you're having for the, the day. These are these are one of the more bizarre ones, at least to me. I mean, I knew what they were. They're sipunculid worms, which is their own phyla. Um, but they're, uh, they're fairly large. Um, they taste like rubber balloon and sauce. That's <laughs> the best thing. I mean, there's no bad taste to them. There just is no, it's more of a texture, but that's it. Then there's different sorts of shrimp, and you can pick your crab or octopus or that sort of thing. Um, Yantai is a, is a lovely city. It's right on the beach. There's a big sandy beach, and it's very artistic. So you can see, you know, even the, the street lights look like gulls. And so there's a lot of art that goes into here. You can see some of the, the different pavilions out there where you can go and sit and watch the ocean or fish or do whatever you want to do. Um, aquaculture just sits offshore as well as some of the, the fishing boats. And so there seems to be a push to move boats out of there because it's interfering, interfering with the view of the, uh, of the tourists. Because they're really trying to make this a tourist area. So, so it's pushing these a little further offshore, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, they're getting to that stage as well. Um, so our next trip was from Yantai until the June 4th was Rongcheng. And this is really Mecca as far as skull culture and whatnot goes. If we look at a satellite shot of Rongcheng, this is Sangu Bay, virtually all the dark that you see here, you can get an idea of the, the scale over here, so it's six kilometers for that, so we're about 10 to 12 kilometers out, it is completely accurate. It's, it's a complete sea of floats. Um, so this is uh, from the, the, the Science and Technology Bureau. They're basically an abalone sea cucumber hatchery, and they're into genetic selection. We'll see some of this. Here's the abalone that they're doing. So there's, again, huge facilities. They pump a lot of water. And abalone basically like darker crevices. So what they do is they put these, these plates, these, uh, um, oh, uh, 
lights out, and they pump water through, and they put some food on. I mean, there's a diatom film that gets on this, and they, the abalone basically grow under these plates. When they're when they're basically about the size of a toonie, they take them out, and then they put them out into the ocean to grow. They put them in with some seaweeds, and they put them in these tanks with uh, or these barrels, and uh, and grow them out. This is a sea cucumber hatchery. Um, interesting, they're still using coal a lot for, for firing, uh, the, for heating. But they, they, they basically use some of the sea urchin technology the Japanese developed. And uh, so here's some larval or juvenile, early juvenile sea cucumbers on these, these wave plastic plates. And they, they produce, like I say, tens of millions of these things to be putting out the sea because they have the, they have the market and obviously the, the hunger for it. Um, we then managed to go down to the to have a look at the uh, at this aquaculture operation, um, and these are some of the, these are obviously working vessels. I mean, they're very hard. They're made locally. Um, they're great photographically, but they're uh, they're they're a hard use boat. Also, they would drive all of our health and safety people here just absolutely <laughs> bananas. I mean, there's I mean there's a pulley on here. I mean, there's more things to get caught in pulled in, fingers to come off, and you can shake a stick at I mean, there's nails sticking out of all sorts of things, so. But anyway, um, you know, in Rome. Um, but anyway, so they have a whole series of different boats, some powered, some unpowered. These are just a, a little different size, and then these are some of the more offshore fleets. That they're, they're, they go out into the Yellow Sea and, and fish with trawls and, and that sort of thing. This is a shot. So this is a shot from up above and you look out and you can't even see the end of the floats that go out there. So you can imagine, floats are two meters apart. Each of those, each of those ball floats that you see are about that big. So they're about, oh, they're about 10 inches across. And they, like I say, two meters apart and four meters between the lines. And they just go on and on. There's, there's, there's basically roads that you take, that the boats travel on to, to go around those. Um, they basically hang all of the shellfish all along those floats, and then between them are all those ropes that they made in those hatcheries. So they tie ropes between each of those. Um, the boats that you see out here with the white awning on them are all abalone boats. The abalone don't really like light, so they, because they're in the bright sun in the middle of the, of the ocean, they're, they, they have this shade from this spot, and that's how they uh, work the abalone when they pull them up. Um, there's a couple of little sheds out there. So it's on a tiny little barge that looks like a little outhouse, and this is the garden. Some guy gets to stay in that, you know, while he's out there. So I don't know whether it's the short straw or however they decide that. <laughs> but anyway, so he's the guard of the whole operation. They, here's some of the scallops that they're growing. Um, they're growing oysters, uh, they're growing sea cucumbers, and uh, like I say, there's just a huge, they grow mussels. You name it, there's, uh, there, there's things called uh, pinna, which is sort of a, a, a fan shell. Um, but anyway, a huge number of different species that they actually grow in some of these things. Here's the seaweed. So here they are pulling up some of the lines. This is a colleague of mine, Terry Chopin. Anyway, he had to hop on board and pull some of them out. <coughs> the point is they haul these things up. Each of those little barges, because they're unpowered, you skull them. They get towed out by the mothership here. And they, they can tow, I don't know, four or five of these boats behind. Each of those will carry two tons of seaweed. And they, and they work, it's all by hand. It's all, you know, Armstrong strength here. You, uh, you pull it up, get all those uh, seaweeds on board the boat. And then you get towed back in where you unload it and you go back out and do it again. Um, here you can see them coming into the shore and they turn it over. At this point it moves to the Ladeo company. Um, and they're the processor. So it comes in, they unload it with these, uh, it looks like the old hay forks that they used to use in barns. And uh, they come up again, I mean, there's people standing on the loads, they get health and safety, at least the you know, would be just going berserk at this point in time. Um, the point is it gets on, it gets on these roll rickety wagons and, and these old tractor type of uh, vehicles that, that, that haul into the plant. 